Hey, what's up? I'm Joe from Video Copilot. Oh, workbench.tv, and uh, I'm here with a quick tip to add to your bag of tricks today. We're going to be doing a little technique that I came up with yesterday. We're going to call uh, single layer track mats. I hate making a track mat if I don't have to, and normally when I want to do something uh, like make this uh, HDMI cable go behind this circle, I'd have to track mat it, or I'd, I'd make a track mat of the circle, you know, make another layer that's the same thing as this, maybe link them together. So if I change one and change the other, whatever. But uh, if you want to do it quick and dirty and in a kind of cool way, you can do this. So I'm gonna take the rectangle tool and I'm going to draw a box down here and I'm gonna set this to subtract. And then I'm going to add one up here to the curve. Ooh, I made that one hand a little too long. We'll fix that. Yeah, bring that back down. All right. So here's the trick. You hit M to open up your mask path properties and hit P with shift to open up position as well. Click all those, set a keyframe. Right? So I don't know if you guys are familiar with the pan behind tool, but you hit Y and you get this tool. It lets you move, not your, it won't let you move your anchor point, but it also lets you move your object without moving any of the masks or whatever that are on the layer. So what we're gonna do is hold shift, move this down. Oh, I didn't, I gotta move my key frames over. My time over. Move this down, right? I just have these markers on this layer to let me know how I had it set up before. I'm gonna set new keys for these and then move it over to here. Move it up. Got to set that one to subtract still. Move these keyframes back over here. Set that one to subtract. So I say it'll come in and go out. So there are a couple of uh, weird things that happen with this and it has to do with whether you've drawn all your mask at the beginning or not. And so to demonstrate, I'll just get rid of that one because I already have the movement. Any mask I put on here will move with this. So draw a new one. Keep overshooting that thing over there. Move that. And then we're gonna set a new keyframe for that mask. Open back up position so I can see it. All right, so over here, so you notice that this mask will move. So what was easiest to do to fix that, um, if you don't want that to happen, because it technically doesn't matter, because it'll still you know, be over it. Um, delete this key, delete that key, delete this, Ask path. So we're just resetting it. And then you go do your same move. In this case, it was down here. Move it back. And then it'll lock in again. It'll be weird over here again because you got to do the same thing on the other side. So it's not like super quick to change as far as that goes. I mean, your movement up and down in this thing is pretty easy. You can still move it around. Um, another problem you might have is if you've drawn your mask too small and then you go over here and you animate this guy up, you know, set that to subtract again, and then you realize you can't really hide it. So you can do this and move it just like a normal mask. But it'll move down. So if you need that to stay the same way, you'll have to do the same kind of technique to, uh, you know, remove the keys wherever it has one, and uh, just keep one key, and then do your movement again and all that kind of stuff. So as far as that goes, it's not the greatest. However, if you don't want to have like 80 layers in your comp, um, it actually works pretty well. And if you know you're not going to be changing it, or I mean, because what client is going to want this move to go slightly different? I mean. It's not a huge concern in this case. So this technique is valid for things like that. You can also uh, use it as I've done earlier in this project um, to mat in multiple objects at the same time. Like as long as they're the same shape and everything, your masks will transfer over. So you can do it that way without having to do like a stencil layer over everything or whatever, or have a track mat per layer and then have to keep up with all of those. 
So that's pretty much it for this one. I told you guys it was going to be quick, so I kept my word on that one. It's just a little technique that you can keep in your toolbox for, you know, any sort of situation that might arise that, uh, you need to do something quick and dirty or you just don't want a lot of layers. I like to have a lot of things like that in my bag of tricks. So hopefully you guys do too. Thanks for watching. Keep following us on workbench.tv for more great tutorials and little quick tips. Thanks guys. Bye.